Hello everyone, today I will present you a NetCDF file format. In the previous Kubernetes video training, you have seen how to have access to the marine data and their documentation, then how to download them and visualize them, and we always spoke about this NetCDF file format. The NetCDF format is a standard format for almost the all scientific data, and in this case, for the Copernicus marine data. So in this video today, I'm going to present you a NetCDF file with a short introduction of its use, and I will show you with a marine data example, also how this file is formed and what kind of information a NetCDF file contains. First of all, the NetCDF format has been created for multidimensional data and it is widely used in geoscience education and research community. And it's very, very flexible and self-describing, which means that it contains by itself a lot of information as the dimensions, the variables and some other information related to the dataset. I will show you that in a few seconds. Each NetCDF file has its own different variables and dimensions. That's why it is the default format for Copernicus marine data. We are now going to understand the structure of a NetCDF file. For personal preference, I use a Python language. I use it on, on a Jupyter notebook. If you don't know this application, please check on the video introduction for the Jupyter notebook. To open and read the NetCDF file, there are two main Python packages, the NetCDF 4 with its module dataset and the XRay package that I called here XR. They can be installed directly both by the bash command pip or via the code installation module. However, for this video, I will work with the XRay module. To open a dataset, I create a variable that I called here file and with the xarray point open dataset command, I open my NetCDF file. In this case, the data is located in a different folder than my Jupyter notebook, so I need to specify the location. Otherwise, I just needed to insert directly the file name, this one, with the extension nc. So I launch the first two cells and we, I obtain the main information for this data file. We can notice a sort of first main structure, the same for each NetCDF file. So we have first the dimensions, then the data variables and finally the attributes. So for Copernicus data and more generally for geospatial data, usually the dimensions are always the same. The depth, latitude, longitude, and time. With the depth, also depending on the product type you download it. So for example, if you have just only surface data, the depth dimension will not be there. Then we see that each dimension has a section of coordinates where an overview of dimensions values is available. For example, for the depth, we have the full range of depth I chosen the first and the last coordinates of latitude and longitude for the geographical area and the temporal range of only one month of data that I selected. I remind you that the data I have here is as a monthly temporal resolution explaining my single temporal dimension. The next element is the data variables, which each of them is uh, its own dimension. For example, in this data set, we have the sea ice concentration, the temperature, the sea temperature, the sea ice thickness, the bottom temperature, and the salinity. And we can also notice the dependency or not on the depth. For example, just the, the salinity and the theta uh, variable, so the sea temperature, has this dependency on the depth dimension. And finally, we have an explanatory chart 
with explication of the attributes, like for example, in this case, the data title, reference, credits, producer, the product name and dataset name, and all the different general information about this dataset. Then, if we want, we can also analyze the variables once at a time. For example, here I want to know more about the CL temperature, so the variable is the tau. In this case, I use this command that literally means that for the file I just opened, for the NetCDF file, I want to know the variable theta. So I launch the command and I obtain the list of attributes for this variable. We notice that this command gives us information about the dimensions that are the same that we saw in the general information of this data. We have information about the number, the total number of values contained in the dataset for this variable and the type of values and also the attributes. So like the longest startup name, the units, and sometimes we can also have uh, factors as the add offset or the scale factor that you have to multiply to the value to obtain the real scale of degree for the variables. The same command can be called for a dimension also. In this case, for example, I call the, I call the command for the longitude and the time. So I launch the command. The first thing that we can instantly notice, they are called the index variable, meaning that these are the header and they just depend on their own dimension. As we see here, the longitude is for the longitude and time is time. We can also see the array containing all the values for, in this case, for the geographical area. Uh, the longitude, we see that it goes from minus 180 to 180, so all across the globe. And for the time, I just have the month of January 2020. And we see that also these variables are the list of attributes with the, the range of values, the step between the values, the unit, the long standard name, and so on. So each NetCDF file contains different variables with proper dimension and attribute. So here I'll show you how to have access to NetCDF file information and how to read them using a Python script and the Excel package. But obviously, there are some other command line interface tools to visualize the structure of an HCDF file, as well as MATLAB, R, NCO, NCDump, and more others. You just need to find the one you feel better with. Also, if, you, for example, you prefer something more visual and intuitive without pass for a command line, you can use the software Panoply. Panoply is a free viewing software developed by the NASA, which allows to open and NetCDF files and visualize them, especially for scientific data on a plot or a diagram. Once you open Panoply, you can import the data set you want to visualize from the file section. And we see in the left the global file interview for this NetCDF file and below the file name of the data we downloaded also the variable that are listed. On the right we have the general description of the data with its, its dimensions, variables and attributes exactly the same that we saw before in the Python uh, script. And if for example you click on one variable you can see for example, let's choose the bottom temperature. On the right, you see all the attributes owned to this variable. So the long name, the standard name, the units, and add offset, the scale factor, and so on. If you need to understand how to visualize an HCDF file, please check on the video how to open and visualize Copernicus Marine Data. Also, if you need more information, a technical facts section is available from the Copernicus website here and for any question please do not hesitate to contact the copernicus marine service desk where a human staff is at your disposal to help you and answer to your need in the short time possible thank you very much for your attention